right, here's a look at some of the most disastrous dishes to have ever been served on Master Chef. And this miss right here ruined the pressure test like never before. That fish was spicy. Yup, that's Paige for you, the self-proclaimed culinary whiz Master Chef really could have done without. You see, Paige was so full of herself that her one single move tanked an entire team challenge. Yeah, all on her own. As a result, she found herself facing a pressure test, where the contestants had to recreate Aaron's grilled pork chop dish. Now, you'd think after the overseasoning disaster earlier, she'd be pretty humble about this one, right? Well, you don't know, Paige. I'm half Mexican, so I'm pretty familiar with Mexican flavor. Despite her confidence, Paige's attempt to recreate the dish left a lot to be desired. That stark white fat. Unrendered. Christina found Paige's pork chop messy and undercooked. And the sauce? Listen to this. Just sloppy, it's messy anymore. Despite her smiley demeanor, Paige couldn't hide from the harsh reality. Her dish was a flop, and her confidence may be a tad misplaced. It was clear that she had a lot to learn, and it just wasn't her time to be on the show. Just like this next contestant right here. But in the meantime, let's talk about this next contestant who had some really questionable skills. One dish that stood out. So what was all the fuss about? Well, this is what she ended up serving. Your dish definitely stood out. Yeah, surprisingly, she went on to win the title. But hey, has this thought ever occurred to your mind that maybe, just maybe, Jennifer Biam is the worst winner in US MasterChef history? For one thing, the C in Jennifer Bam stands for consistency. Now, it's a perplexing paradox. She showcased flashes of promise, but muddied it all down with way too many moments of abysmal failure. So, in the elimination test in episode 13, when she presented her ground pork patty, right off the bat, Chef Ramsay was appalled. It's what I grew up with. So if it's that what you grew up with, then this should be mind-blowing. Zero on presentation. Let that set the stage for what's to come. Because if we're talking flavor, well, oh yeah, believe me, it completely deserved that thrashing. In fact, Chef Ramsay flat out called it disgusting, calling it a joke for good measure. The weakest performances in this competition. He also implied that she hadn't broken a sweat while making it. And we all know how important blood, sweat, and tears are for making art. I'm sure he had a lot more to say, but only managed to get this out. I'm gonna stop that. Joe, on the other hand, was furious. He chucked her plate into the trash like it had personally offended him, grumbling about how it was a waste of everyone's time. It's a great example of what garbage is. And you guys... Well, she was lucky she didn't get eliminated that night, and even luckier that Christian messed up in final three. But sometimes the challenges the contestants face are totally unexpected. Like what happened in season seven, episode eight's elimination challenge, when Chef Ramsay wheeled out some of the most appetizing proteins you can eat. I'm talking pig's ears, bull's testicles, chicken feet, lamb tongue, and pork tail. These are some of the cheapest and most underused cuts of meat. Safe to say, these ingredients would need a ton of love to make them work. With a tight 45 minutes on the clock, they dashed to the pantry for their awful ingredients. Diana took a shot at making menudo from her tripe, boldly tweaking it for a crispier punch. So gonna try soup. What's the base in here? Amidst the judges' deliberation, Chef Ramsay's concern over Diana's dish became apparent, and of course he was right. When is he not? Wow. Too hot? That finally hotter. <laughs> See, she had a lot to prove. Aiming to wow with her spicy flavors, she presented her tripe menudo jazzed up with corn and jalapenos. Chef Ramsay had to literally excavate the dish to find the tripe, only to discover it as raw as the day it was born. But where is it? I mean, I, like I said, Chef, I minced it in there, so there's very small pieces. I see little spe Since she had no idea how to fix the raw stomach lining, she simply minced it up into tiny pieces, buried it in her broth, and tried to play it cool, but Chef Ramsay wasn't a fool. Raw tripe here. That's what it is. He called her out for the cardinal sin of the night, trying to mask the undercooked meat. And it wasn't even a good cover-up job. Sadly for her, her half-baked effort wasn't enough to keep her from getting kicked off the show. Next up is a contestant from Season 7, Episode 15. Katie's red team lost the pop-up restaurant challenge and went straight to pressure test. The chefs were confronted with the daunting challenge of preparing three distinct desserts in just one hour. Desserts, 60 minutes, barely enough time to cook one dessert. It's like it's an impossible task. Katie, Dan, and Sean were tasked with baking a milk chocolate cheesecake that delicate almond twill, those beautiful glistening candy kumquats, a white chocolate eclair, white chocolate ganache, and a dark chocolate lava cake. Coming dark chocolate molten lava cake with candied hazelnuts. While the menu sounded delicious, it was clearly very technical, and it seemed like not all of these cooks would make it through the hour without some desserts being underbaked or missing from the judges' table. Even Gordon, Christina, and Kevin understood that this was a tall order for the contestants. A tough one. You guys are really out of your mind. Katie was feeling nervous. You can get through this. I can get through this, I'm strong. While Dan, well, look for yourself. 
Look at Dan's pat of shoe dough. It's liquid. So he had to redo his pate of shoe from scratch. Meanwhile, Sean, as the judges noticed, was piping into the bottom of his eclairs. You can't pipe those so far. But he managed to navigate the test relatively well. Yeah, uh, ran out of time getting it out of that mold, but I'm glad that it's up here. His cheesecake appeared good on the outside, though Christina found it slightly underbaked upon cutting into it. That's disappointing. However, his eclair encountered issues. While the pastry was nice, he didn't let it cool sufficiently before piping in the white chocolate, causing all the filling to melt when Kevin tasted it. Where's it going? Is this it here? Yeah, I guess I put it in while the eclair was too hot. Uh, Sean redeemed himself with his lava cake, which was perfectly crispy outside and delightfully gooey inside. It's crisp on the outside. Mm. It's delicious. Thank God it held well and didn't break down unlike him. Yeah. That's what MasterChef is all about. He effortlessly secured his spot in the top five thanks to this standout dessert. They didn't make it easy on the judges either. Katie's cheesecake turned out flat. Cheesecake? Yeah. It just, it didn't set. But hey, the crust was spot on. Whereas Dan skipped using a water bath. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Moving on to the eclair round, Dan's was slightly overcooked but filled with white chocolate, while Katie's was missing white chocolate altogether. White no chocolate. white chocolate. Yes, chef. And a chocolate challenge. That's a significant miss, a glaring error. It was evident that Dan won the eclair round. Finally, it all boiled down to the lava cake, often a make or break moment. Unfortunately, both Katie and Dan's lava cakes were undercooked and messy when Gordon checked them, sealing their fate in the challenge. So let's check out exhibit one. Outside's not formed yet. Now, time for exhibit two. Not enough time. So the judges acknowledged that Katie had managed to incorporate some nice flavors into some of her desserts. Chef Ramsay then announced, so, any guesses as to who it was? Well, let's find out. Jesus. It's not you, my darling. That's so cruel. Sometimes I hate the theatrics. Just get to the point, man. But I guess when Chef Ramsay's announcing, you must never celebrate too quickly because he has four up on the balcony and into the top five of the biggest cooking competition. He missed including chocolate in one of her dishes during a chocolate-focused challenge. With that oversight in mind, they bid farewell to Katie. But you know what? It's not easy being a contestant on the show. The contestants have to worry more than just the challenges and impending eliminations. I mean, to what extent does a cooking show supposedly focused on culinary growth and personal development contribute to pushing someone to feel they've exhausted their creativity only to then frame their mental health challenges as if they're solely responsible for them. It's disheartening and morally questionable to reduce mental health to a narrative device. Hell's Kitchen's portrayal of Peter's personal struggles and his transformation into a victim or a quitter may be unintentional, but it underscores the potential harm of consuming entertainment without questioning or accountability. Neuroscientist Els van der Helm, a professor at IE Business School in Madrid, explains, sleep-deprived people show reduced emotional self-control. According to a 2007 study in Current Biology, the amygdala, which processes emotions, is 60% more reactive in individuals individuals who haven't slept enough, causing them to react more intensely to negative stimuli. When we see contestants spitting, crying, or screaming on screen, we often assume that's just their personality. Few of us consider they might be experiencing extreme fatigue and working under inhumane conditions. Mental health workers have found that people who compete on shows, even winners, often suffer severe and long-lasting psychological trauma. Contestants lose their sense of self, leading to the worst traumas after the program airs. They are left wondering, now what? And have to face a society that believes it knows them based on a TV portrayal. Reality shows like MasterChef keep attracting viewers and drawing in hopeful contestants who are unprepared for the complexities of fame and underestimate the stress they have to endure. This intense environment of pressure, sudden fame, lack of emotional support, and the constant push of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity is a breeding ground for toxicity and exploitation. Now, you have to see what happened in episode 18th of season 3, which in my opinion had one of the most difficult and brutal pressure tests. So here's what went down. The final four home cooks on MasterChef paired up to cook for some of the biggest names in the culinary world, who joined our regular judges on the panel. In the world would be honored and terrified to cook for these three guest judges. The guest judges included world-renowned chefs, Chef Guy Savoy. It's restaurants around the world including his restaurant Guy Savoy in Paris. And of course, there was Chef Daniel Boulard. Is Chef Daniel Boulou, owner of seven of the most acclaimed restaurants. And then there was Chef Alain Ducasse, 
Alan Ducasse's restaurants in Paris, London, and Monaco. Yeah, what did I tell you? No pressure at all. The home cooks were split into teams of two, and since Christine won last week's challenge, she got to pick her teammate, she chose Becky, again setting up a battle of guys, which is the blue team against the girls, or the red team. The teams had 90 minutes to serve their appetizers, followed by 30 minutes each for their entree and dessert. The women's menu was. Very Asian dominated, I mean. Very Asian dominated. Meanwhile, there was some tension between Josh and Frank, stemming from Frank saving himself in the pressure test when Josh was in danger. Decent animosity creep in. Mm -hmm. Because if I was Josh right now... Projecting much? Well, what do you think? They really do. You can't really peel these, though. Or, yeah, it was unclear if they could set their differences aside and work well together. But one thing was clear. They were taking big swings that night. Lamb saddle. Prosciutto wrap lamb saddle. You guys might be stepping out of your... Graham commented that if Frank and Josh could nail the lamb dish, it would steal the show. If can pull that off, I think that that's, that's gonna be the shining dish of the whole day. The judges praised Christine and Becky for their well-balanced menu, but acknowledged the guys had a more impressive lineup. The ability of the blue team menu definitely gives them an advantage. But I mean... Providing they're taking bigger risks. Yeah. Okay, that's just Joe. Again, comparing an Asian menu with something that's more sophisticated for him. The VIP judges arrived with a big fanfare, but they quickly headed to the dining room. In the world, here tonight in the Mouth Chef kitchen. The teams had to plate six servings of each dish they prepared, making for a tense challenge. Time ran out for the appetizers, and the judges began tasting. For the red team, they served Thai seafood soup with daikon and micro herbs. Chef Bulud appreciated the delicate nature of the dish, but Chef Savoy felt it needed more seasoning. It's not uh, concentrated. Barely cooked the shellfish. Mm -hmm. That was beautiful. I like the delicate dish. Like Meanwhile, the blue team presented spring vegetable terrine with spot prawn mousse and pea puree. Chef Ducasse commented that it was a bit small, while Chef Bulu noted it lacked depth and flavor despite having good texture. For me, it's too small. Carrots and asparagus is a little bit limited in flavor. Meanwhile, Chef Savoy found it too dense. Aladdin. You feel uh, heavy. In the end, the judges leaned towards the red team's dish as the better of the two. During the entree service, Becky hurried to slice all the duck. I'm like, there's one. Shink, 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 shink. There's one. My heart is beating out of my chest right now. While Josh realized he forgot the yogurt and rushed to finish it. So I forget the yogurt sauce, so I had to whip up some yogurt sauce really, really, really quick. Unfortunately, Becky ran out of time to plate rice cakes for all the dishes. Unfortunately, I did not get the rice cakes. The red team served duck breast with crispy bamboo rice, Chinese broccoli, and daikon. Chef Savoy commented that the rice was too crispy and sweet. The rice is too sweet. Graham noted it lacked good seasoning, but praised the concept. It was under seasoned for me, I like. On the other hand, the blue team presented stuffed lamb saddle with couscous and roasted vegetables. Chef Savoy declared the lamb was perfectly cooked. The contrast with uh, dry fruit inside is nice. And Chef Ramsay unequivocally favored the blue team's dish. Yeah, hands down. Uh, the blue team, definitely. In the end, the judges overwhelmingly chose the blue team as the clear winner for the entree round. In the dessert round, both teams faced struggles to finish their dishes on time. The blue team's plating looked inconsistent, which could be a drawback for them. Promotion. There's no continuity on the desserts. The red team served coconut verine with coconut cake, tropical fruit, and guava coolis. Chef Savoy appreciated seeing all the layers, and Chef Ramsay liked the acidity paired with the desserts. Can see everything, the guava, mm -hmm. the passion fruit, the mango. Which is the acidity with the dessert. Meanwhile, the blue team presented white chocolate mousse with roasted strawberries and rhubarb. The judges discussed the flawed variations in plating. Your stand, I don't. Uh, actually, smooth. Chef Ducasse's over here does not have balsamic or... Chef Ducasse wasn't a fan of the mousse. I don't like While Joe seemed to love it. Salty and tart. Altogether, it really kind of pushes the limits. So, who won, you ask? Well, check this out. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Christine's victory secured her a spot in the final three. This meant Josh and Frank would face off in the pressure test to determine who would join them. The ladies headed up to the gallery to watch as the guys tackled making a white cheddar cheese souffle. Timing is everything. It's about to get more difficult. But that's when Joe threw a curveball. At the same exact time as you bring Gordon his savory cheese souffle. Now, Graham chimed in with his own feedback. Dark chocolate souffle. Now, Josh and Frank had just one hour to whip up three flawless souffles each, using the same set of ingredients, all at the same time. It was definitely gonna be super hard. Why can't you guys all eat the same one? Oh no, <laughs> it would be too easy. Yeah. See, Josh has a track record of making impressive desserts. Whereas desserts aren't Frank's strong suit, but you never know how it'll turn out. Josh took a risk by adding whole raspberries to his souffle, which is unconventional, and Joe worried it might backfire. He's kind of thinking that out of the box. If he's off the rails, then I'm worried about him. Unfortunately, Josh's souffles were late. Yeah, and end up undercooked, which is a setback. I don't even know if there's enough time. There's no way in hell that's gonna cook in eight and a half minutes. I could be going home. I'm 
This is intense. I think for the first time in the history of MasterChef, we may have given them a challenge that's not. On the other hand, Frank seemed to be handling the pressure of the test quite calmly and competently. But I think that Frank is playing it too black and white, a little too technical. Eventually, they both got their souffles in the oven, so now it was a waiting game. Time soon ran out, and they served their dishes. Chef Ramsay, Graham, and Joe decided to try their respective choice of souffles and remained silent, leaving both contestants uncertain. Yeah, no immediate feedback. The judges praised both contestants for presenting three stunning souffles each. About Josh's cheese souffle, here's what Chef Ramsay had to say. Yours had that rich sumptuousness. And again, seasoned. As for Frank, this is how things turned out for him. Frank, yours had that rich sumptuousness. And again, seasoned beautifully. Paprika. So who won the round? So the raspberry souffles. Yeah, who knew right? Anyway, on to round number two. Guess what Joe had to say about Josh's raspberry souffle? Extracted more of the real raspberry flavor. As for Frank's dish, well, the feedback wasn't too different from Josh. The winning raspberry souffle, technically kind of perfect. Pretty close, huh? So who do you think won the round? And that souffle belonged to... Oh, get to the point, Joe. I mean, we don't have forever. I'm sorry, Graham, to put you in this situation. With the score surprisingly tied at 1 to 1, the final decision rested on the chocolate souffle. Well, not entirely surprising actually. See, it's a format we all by now have grown accustomed to. It's a cliche. A regular on MasterChef where there is always a tiebreaker. And this time, the final decision lay in the hands of Graham, who, by the way, noted one of them stood out slightly more than the other. Good job, Frank. You did it, man. Sadly, this meant Frank was going home. My friend, you're the real deal. It was a close call. He was so calm, composed, delivered his best, and deserved to walk away with his head held high. But speaking of pressure, here's another contestant whose creativity suffered at the hands of the intense pressure of the kitchen. Grab your sausage, please. I'm talking about Diamond. Unfortunately for her, though, her dish was far from a diamond in the rough. It was just rough. Now, she decided to prepare a chicken and Asiago cheese sausage. To complement the sausage, she crafted a quick bruschetta topping made with fresh tomatoes, garlic, basil, salt, and pepper. To add a final touch, she garnished the dish with a Parmesan crisp and some fried basil. Pepper, and I garnished it with a little bit of Parmesan crisp. And As Diamond described her dish, she explained that she had chosen to use chicken thighs and included the chicken skin for extra flavor. What's the fat in there? Um, I just now, let's get down to analyzing the dish and see where it stands. If you ask me, the visual presentation was quite appealing, with bright colors that caught the eye. However, there were some doubts about the Parmesan crisp. I mean, of course, it looked good, but there were questions about whether it would enhance the dish overall. Actually, it looks quite bright. Too sure about the Parmesan crisp, but I like the visual. But wait, because the direction of this judgment was about to take a turn for the worse. That doesn't look like it's cooked. Turns out, the judges were primarily concerned with the taste and texture of the sausage itself. They knew that the true test of a sausage lay in what was inside. It's actually worse. Yeah, that's crazy. So that I touched thing. it. And like I said, what was inside was about as far from good as possible. Like, even a novice in the kitchen can tell you that she was living on borrowed time from the moment that sausage hit the plate. And well, what do you know? The judges made that abundantly clear to her. Barely running around the garden. Diamond felt her heart sink. She had worked so hard, but it seemed like all her efforts were about to go down the drain because of this one mistake. Mm, I'm sorry about that. Back at her station, Diamond was devastated. She was well aware of the gravity of her error. Serving raw chicken was not just a minor slip-up. It was one of the single most grave mistakes that she could have made here. And it wasn't the kind of thing that could be overlooked. And honestly, the reality of the situation hit her hard. She realized that this could very well be the end of her journey in the competition. There was no room for such a mistake in this cutthroat environment, and yet here she was with a severely undercooked sausage in hand. Worst possible thing that could have happened. Diamond took the time to reflect on her experience. She had aimed to create something unique and flavorful, but the execution had fallen short. She had chosen to take a risk with the chicken thigh and skin, hoping it would pay off in taste. However, the undercooking issue overshadowed any positive aspects of her dish. In the competition, every second counts, and Diamond had learned this lesson the hard way. She thought about what had gone wrong. Perhaps she had been too ambitious with her concept, or maybe the pressure had gotten to her. Whatever the reason, she was now facing the harsh reality of her mistake. Raw oh, sausage, like, that's it. That's the end. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. I'm going. As she stood at her station, Diamond felt a mix of emotions. There was disappointment, frustration, and a sense of finality. She had let herself down, and she knew that this mistake could cost her the competition. It's raw. 
Despite her disappointment, Diamond knew that this experience would be a valuable lesson. So that's a wrap on the most disastrous dishes to ever be served on Master Chef. Do you think I missed out on any? Who do you think was the worst? Don't forget to let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And if you thought this video was crazy, make sure to check out the next video right here. It's even better.